the character panel is one of the most essential instruments if you're looking to work with text in Illustrator. Besides the classic font size or style attributes, it provides access to more precise text settings. Hi there everyone, my name is Andre Marius, I've been working in Illustrator for over 10 years and in this Embato Task Plus tutorial I'll put my experience to use as I show you all the available settings that can be accessed using the character panel and hopefully at the end you'll be able to understand much better the powers that you have when working with text in Illustrator. Besides the character panel, we'll also have a look at the open type and character styles panels. To better exemplify most of the settings from these panels, we'll use some fonts and designs from Envato Elements, where you can get unlimited downloads of stock videos, music, graphics, photos, fonts and many more all ready to use and with simple commercial licensing. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's move to Illustrator and for the beginning let's see how you can open the character panel. You can either go to window, type and character or you can use the Ctrl and D keyboard shortcut. By default you'll have access to the most basic settings. To add the rest of the settings, you need to open the flyout menu and first of all select show options and then also turn on the snap to grave options, the font height options and don't forget the touch type tool. Before we start to explore all of these settings, you should know that the character panel can also be accessed from the control panel as long as you have a piece of text selected or when a text tool is active. All you have to do is click this character button and a character flyout panel will open with all the available settings. Now that you're set, let's focus on the character panel and we'll start with the font settings. Just click this button to open the fonts list in the top of the list you will find the recently used fonts, next you have the variable fonts and then the list continues with the rest of your fonts. On the left side you will find the name of the font and between the parentheses you have the number of available styles. Keep in mind that you can click this arrow button to quickly have a look at all the available styles. If you can't see these font previews, you need to open the flyout menu and turn on enable in menu font previews. Getting back to the fonts list, you can click this button to quickly view similar fonts. Remember to click this back button to remove the filter and return to your main list of fonts. Using these star icons, you can easily save your fonts as favorites or remove them from the favorites list. And on the right edge, you will find a series of icons which indicate the type for each font. It can be an open type font, a true type font, a variable font, an SVG font, or an activated Adobe font. Speaking of Adobe fonts, if you switch to this Find More tab, you can scroll through all the fonts that Adobe provides. Once you find a font that you like, all you have to do is click this activate button to add the font to your fonts list and then it can be used in your design. Let's return to the main fonts list and see how you can use these filters. With this first button you can filter your fonts by classification and properties. Just check the settings that interest you and the list of available fonts will update accordingly. Let's clear these filters and check this star button whenever you need to view only the fonts that you marked as favorites. Click this button to view only the recently added fonts or this one to view just the activated Adobe fonts. Keep in mind that you can combine these filters to narrow your search and remember to click this clear all button to clear your filters and return to the main list of fonts. Let's continue with this drop down menu which can be pretty useful if you need to preview certain characters from a font. And using these three buttons you can adjust the size of the font sample. 
Finally, when you know the name of the font that you plan to use, simply type it in in this field and it will show up for you to select it. When you're using a font that comes with more than one style, you can also change it using this font style menu. On the other hand, when you're using a variable font, you'll also get the variable font settings. Just click this button and use the sliders to further stylize your font. Next, you have the font height reference menu. The default EM box will display the font size, including the height of the bounding box that's around your text. Selecting cap height will adjust the font size in reference to the uppercase letters from your text. Switching to X height will set the font size in reference to the lowercase letters such as X and Z. And finally, the ICF box will set the font size in reference to the ICF box. Keep in mind that this ICF box generally applies for Chinese, Japanese and Korean fonts. Moving to the next set of settings, the first four can be used to change the size of the text, to adjust the space between paragraphs or to edit the space between characters. Let's start with the first one and see how you can adjust the font size. First, you can use this arrow button to select one of these preset font size values. Using these tiny arrow buttons, you can increase or decrease the font size by one pixel. Holding down the control key as you click these buttons will adjust the size by only 0.1 pixels and holding down the shift key will adjust the size by 10 pixels. Besides these arrows, you can always click this icon to select the current font size, and using the up or down arrow keys, you can easily adjust the font size. Again, holding down the control key as you press the arrow keys will adjust the font size by only 0.1 pixels, while holding down the shift key will adjust it by 10 pixels. Finally, you can always select the existing font size and type in your own custom value. And keep in mind that any of these techniques can also be used to adjust the rest of the settings that have this same layout. Let's continue with the leading, which is the distance measured from the baseline of one line of text to the baseline of the line above it. A baseline is this invisible line on which your letters sit. To adjust the leading, feel free to use any of the techniques that were used to edit the font size. Additionally, you can double click this icon whenever you wish to have the same values for font size and leading. And you can also use one more keyboard shortcut. Press Alt and the up arrow key to decrease the leading by 2 pixels or Alt and the down arrow key to increase it by 2 pixels. And adding the control key to this keyboard shortcut will increase or decrease the leading by 10 pixels. One more thing that you should know about leading is that you can set custom values for specific lines of text from a paragraph. Use the type tool to select one or more lines of text and adjust the leading as you see fit. Moving to kerning, this can be used to adjust the space between specific pairs of letters. Select a piece of text, make sure that the type tool is active and click between two letters from your text. Focus on the kerning box and edit this value, thus adjusting the space between your letters. When the kerning is set to auto, the value will appear between parentheses. Auto kerning is the default one and it uses kerning settings that come with most fonts. This setting will set specific spacing values for particular combinations of letters, these being the most common. On the other hand, optical kerning will adjust letter spacing based on their shapes. This can be pretty useful when you're using a font with no built-in kerning or if you use several fonts or sizes in a text. As with the leading, kerning can also be done using a keyboard shortcut. 
Press Alt and the right arrow key to increase or Alt and the left arrow key to decrease the leading by 20. And again, adding the control key to this keyboard shortcut will increase or decrease the kerning by 100. Let's continue with the tracking, which is another method that can be used to adjust the letter spacing in Illustrator. Make sure that your text is selected, focus on the tracking setting and adjust this value as you see fit. As with the kerning, you can use a keyboard shortcut to easily adjust the tracking. Press Alt Shift and the right arrow key or Alt Shift and the left arrow key to increase or decrease the tracking by 20. Or again, you can add the control key to this keyboard shortcut to increase or decrease the tracking by 100. You can always set custom tracking settings for specific characters in a word or words in a paragraph. All you have to do is use the type tool to select these elements and adjust the tracking as you wish. Tracking and kerning go hand in hand, so feel free to combine these settings to meticulously adjust the space between letters. Continuing with the vertical and horizontal scale, these two settings can be used to scale your text in Illustrator. Just use these percentage values to scale your text relative to the existing font size. As we already mentioned, a baseline is this invisible line on which your letters sit. Using baseline shift, you can move the entire text or selected letters up or down relative to the baseline. Select a piece of text or use the type tool to select just parts from that text. Focus on the baseline shift setting and adjust it as you see fit. A negative value will move your text below the baseline, while a positive one will move it above the baseline. You can also use the Alt Shift and the Up arrow key or Alt Shift and the Down arrow key to increase or decrease the baseline shift by 2 pixels. And adding the Control key to this command will adjust the baseline shift by 10 pixels. Baseline shift can be particularly useful when you're working with text on a path as it provides a quick and easy way for you to move that text along the path. Getting back to the character panel using this character rotation setting, you can easily rotate letters from your text. All you have to do is select a piece of text and set the angle of rotation. This will independently rotate each letter from your text. To rotate just a particular letter from your text, you need to select the Type tool, select a letter from your text, and then rotate it as you wish. Moving to the next set of commands, this first pair of buttons can be used to easily make text caps in Illustrator. Select a piece of text and simply click this All Caps button to turn the lowercase letters into capital letters. Clicking this other button will turn the lowercase letters into small caps. Small caps are lowercase characters that resemble the uppercase letters, but are reduced in size closer to the lowercase characters. The next pair of buttons can be used to insert superscripts and subscripts. Superscript is a text reduced in size in relation to the existing font size and raised in relation to the baseline. Use the type tool to select the letters that you want to turn into superscript and just click this button. On the other hand, subscript is again a text reduced in size in relation to the existing font size but lowered in relation to the baseline. Use again the type tool to select the text that you want to turn into subscript and this time click this button. As you can see, these two settings can be pretty useful when you're working with mathematical or scientific text. The underline and stripe through settings are pretty self-explanatory. Select a piece of text and just click this button to underline your text or click this other button whenever you need to strike through a piece of text. Moving down to this language drop-down menu, you should know that this will set the hyphenation language. 
Next, you have the anti-aliasing setting, which can be helpful if you're planning to save your text as a rasterized image. By default, it is set to sharp. Let's go to view and pixel preview to see how your text would look once it's rasterized. And using one of the anti-aliasing methods, you can smoothen the appearance of the curvy edges from your text. Keep in mind that most of the times the sharp anti-aliasing method is the ideal option, so you won't have to mess with the other settings. Besides the default letter design, fonts can include additional characters, which are called glyphs. For example, the H lowercase from this Colina regular font comes with two glyph alternatives. Use the type tool or the touch type tool to select a letter from your text and this small menu will display the glyph alternatives. Simply click one of these to insert it in your text. Now going to window, type and glyphs will open the glyphs panel where you can find all the available glyphs for the selected font. As you can see, you can use this drop drop menu to filter the available glyphs. And if you wish to add a glyph from this list, all you have to do is double click it. Keep in mind that the type and number of available glyphs varies from font to font. The glyphs panel can be useful when you want to insert a few glyphs, but if you need to activate a specific set of glyphs for an entire paragraph, the open type panel is a much better solution. So let's go to window, type, and open type to open this panel and using all of these buttons you'll be able to easily activate or deactivate the available sets of glyphs for any open type font remember that not all the fonts have these sort of settings available so it will depend on the font that you choose to use we'll start with the standard ligatures ligatures are additional replacement characters for certain letter combos such as FI, FFI, FFL, and many more. We'll use this Colina regular font for this example. As you can see, you can filter the standard ligatures from the glyphs panel. Now you could use the type tool to select each combo of characters and replace them one by one, but a much easier solution would be to simply click this button to quickly insert the standard ligatures throughout your entire text. Next, you have contextual alternates, which glue together certain letters, giving your text a better flow. Besides these standard ligatures, some fonts also include discretionary ligatures for letter pairs such as CT, ST, and FT. Click this button to activate discretionary ligatures. Next, you have swashes, which are decorations that embellish characters. These are generally added in the beginning or at the end of a word. Stylistic alternates can be used to further stylize a font. Although this is not a rule, these will usually adjust the look for most of the vowels. As the name implies, titling alternates are for titling. Titling fonts are designed specifically for headlines or display usage, and using titling alternates you can further decorate such fonts. When the font makes it available, this ordinals button can be another method that can be used to insert superscripts in Illustrator. It can be a bit of a time saver as it adds more than one superscript with only one click. Just remember that it all depends on the font that you choose to use, so this won't be available for any font. If you're working with fractions and the font allows it, you can use this button to nicely nest numbers on top of one another. Finally, using this stylistic sets button, you can turn on and off specific style sets. Depending on the type of font that you select, the names might help you understand what will change whenever you activate or deactivate a style set. When the font allows it, you can use this figure drop drop menu to particularly style the numbers of that font. Select tabular lining to use full height numbers of the same width. This can be useful when you need to perfectly align numbers in columns. Using proportional all style will create numbers that have varying heights and widths. Select proportional lining to use full height numbers with varying widths. 
and finally tabular all style will create numbers with equal widths but varying heights again as long as the font allows it you can use this superscript superior or this numerator settings to create variations of a superscript or you can use the subscript inferior or the denominator settings to create variations of a subscript now that you learned about glyphs let's get back to the character panel and see how you can use this snap to glyph settings in order to get access to these settings you need to enable the smart guides and the snap to glyph Keep in mind that the snap to glyph won't work if you have the snap to grid enabled or if the alignment guides are disabled. You can check this by going to edit, preferences and smart guides. So check this box if you don't have it already. And remember to always have the snapping tolerance set to at least one. Having it set to zero will disable the snap to glyph. Let's click OK to apply the changes and check the snap to baseline. We'll use the pen tool for this example. As you can see, when I hover over the baseline of the text, I get this nice guide, which I can use to perfectly align my new shape with the baseline of the text. Let's continue with the snap to X height and we'll use the selection tool to move this rectangle and make it snap to the height of these lowercase characters. We'll move this blue rectangle behind the text. Continue with the snap to glyph bounds which will generate guides on the left, right, top and bottom edges of the glyphs. For this example, we'll use the rectangle tool to create a shape that covers your entire text. Let's fill it with white and again send it to back. And finally, enabling the snap to proximity guides will generate guides near the X height, the baseline or the glyph bounds. Let's reselect this blue rectangle, pick the rotate tool and as you click and drag to rotate this shape, you will get these guides. Additionally, you can isolate a character to only generate guides around it. Make sure that the selection tool is active. Right click a letter from your text and simply select snap to glyph. Once you have a letter isolated, you can use the snap to angular guides. Let's grab the pen tool and you can easily draw a path along the edges of your isolated character. To release an isolated character, you can either right click it again and select release snap to glyph, or you can click this release glyph button from the control panel. Anchor point is the last snap to glyph setting that you can use. Having it active, you can snap to the anchor points of a glyph. We'll use again the pen tool to create a shape that connects these two letters. Moving to the top of the character panel, pressing this button will activate the touch type tool. Keep in mind that you can also select it from your toolbar or much easier by pressing the shift and T keyboard shortcut. Using this amazing tool, you can click any character from your text to select it, rotate it using this round handle, and then click and drag it to move it wherever you wish. This might be one of the easiest methods that you can use to quickly adjust a piece of text in Illustrator. Now that we covered all the settings from the character panel, let's have a look at the remaining commands from the flyout menu. Open it and we'll start with the standard vertical Roman alignment. This will only affect the text that's added using vertical type tools. Keep it enabled and the letters from your text will remain vertical or disable it and the letters from your text will rotate 90 degrees like this. Beside these buttons from the character panel, you can also use the commands from the flyout menu to add text caps or to insert superscript and subscript. By default, the fractional width setting is enabled and you should keep it like this as it varies the spacing between characters and sometimes uses only fractions of whole pixels. 
The only time when you might need to disable it is when you set the font size to be really small, because fractional widths might cause the text to overlap or have too much free space. But this won't happen very often, so keep in mind that this setting should remain enabled. Whenever you need to make sure that a word or a paragraph will not break into syllables, just select it and go to No Break in the Flyout menu of the Character panel. Last but not least, selecting Reset panel from the Flyout menu will replace the existing character settings with the default ones. If you wish to adjust these default settings, you need to open the Character Styles panel by going to Window, Type and Character Styles, open the Flyout menu of this panel and go to Character Style Options, and you can start with the basic character formats to adjust the main settings. Remember to click OK to apply the changes when you're done. And finally, once you create a text style that you like, you might want to save it and use it for another text. This can be easily done using the Character Styles panel. Select the piece of text with the style that you like and click this button to save it. And then select your other piece of text and just click the character style to instantly apply all the text settings from your first piece of text. That's mostly all that you need to know about working with text and the character panel in Illustrator. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it lets me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.